French photographer and filmmaker Stéphane Granzato was documenting sperm whales for his photo book and stumbled upon an unusual scene. The whales were standing in the water without moving, just standing there. But the reason why the sperm whales did this turned out to be even weirder. What would you think if you spotted a group of vertically arranged whales? Are they communicating with the supreme alien intelligence? No, really, it's very weird. But there is a reasonable explanation for this. Every animal on the planet needs to rest from time to time. This is true for every creature, from elephants to jellyfish, from humans to insects. Some of them, like domestic cats, spend a lot of time napping. And some are like whales. To rest, they float in the middle of the ocean like giant fishing floats. But this only lasts about 15 minutes. Whales can spend about 7% of the entire day on rest, and this is a record among mammals. Does this count as sleeping? Well, it's pretty hard to fall asleep in such a short time, especially if your eyes continue to keep watching everything around you. Remember Gandalf? If he were a whale, Pippin would never get the Palantir. Some scientists believe that during a short rest, whales remain awake with half of their brains active, so you can't even call it a normal sleep. But is there any other way when you can always be attacked at any moment? Also, this is not the only reason. Whales simply cannot really fall asleep because they control their breathing. That's actually quite inconvenient. Humans do not need to do anything to keep on breathing. The body will take care of it on its own. But whales live underwater and have to constantly monitor whether or not they can breathe right now. Remember this fact, I'll get back to it in a bit. But whales not only have complete control over their breathing, they also know how to distribute oxygen to the right organs. For example, if at the moment the animals are not using anything else other than their brains and fins, these organs will get all the oxygen. Why supply it to the stomach when it has nothing to digest? After all, you should save your oxygen just like your energy. If you live underwater, your life depends on it, literally. Is there any other way to avoid external threats? I don't know dive deeper? Each species can dive to different depths without risk to the body, so maybe the whales are trying to dive to the very bottom so that some great white shark does not notice them. Sounds logical, so we'll put it down in the textbooks. What do you mean it's not true? In fact, whales do not dive too deep to sleep, they need to emerge to the surface periodically to breathe again. Great white sharks, in turn, prefer great depths, so the chances resting whales will be attacked by this predator are slim. An orca is a different story, though. For them, this is a comfortable living environment where they can swim and have a snack. Perhaps whales gather in groups to protect themselves from orcas, but to be honest, I don't know how this can help. If you've seen my video about orcas, you know nothing can stop them. Perhaps the only thing that can somehow save resting whales is the reaction speed. They quickly wake up and try to swim away from danger as far as possible. There's something a little embarrassing about this. You are a huge animal, but you still have to flee to avoid being eaten. Still, the whales manage to find the perfect balance. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. They can't go too close to the surface. There are sunbeams and seagulls above. Going even deeper is also not an option, because the deeper you dive, the stronger the water pressure. I'm not sure if any of the sperm whales are bothered by that. They're tougher than humans, after all. But why take a risk when you can avoid it? Besides, it's really cold down below, and who'd want to sleep in the cold? Especially when you're a whale and you need to maintain the temperature of your huge body. Well, don't forget that whales constantly need to breathe, which means they need to emerge to the surface. You've probably seen how whales breathe. Yes, these fountains are the result of that. To take a breath, the whales have to spout the water in the blowhole and swish. They need to do it every few minutes depending on the species. It's unlikely that at least one whale would dare dive closer to the bottom if it might be too deep to take a breath of air in time. Apparently it happens like that. The whales take a breath and dive into the water, but not too deep, and gradually come back to the surface. It's believed that thanks to the arrangement of the internal organs, the whale's head is much lighter. So at some point, whales freeze vertically. Catching whales while they relax requires tremendous luck. They're too timid and immediately swim away at the slightest hint of danger. So when a group of researchers discovered sleeping sperm whales in 2008, they tried to get away from the animals as quietly and carefully as possible. But things turned out as usual. Yeah, 
They nudged one of the resting whales and scared away the whole group. Oh, and by the way, if the whales are watching everything that happens around them, why did they not immediately swim away when the ship approached them? Well, maybe because the ship is not an orca after all. Ah, that's a killer whale! A killer whale! It's just a ship, Steve. Okay, everything is more or less clear when it comes to whales. What about the rest of the marine creatures? The ones that are not mammals. Take fish, for example. Can they fall asleep? Close your eyes. Relax. Nope. Since there's simply no dust under the water, fish do not have eyelids to close their eyes. Hey you, fish. Blink twice if you hate finding Nemo. You gotta be kidding me. But the structure of the eyes is not the only difference. Many areas of the human brain become less active when people are sleeping, especially in the neocortex. This is the layer that processes the highest cognitive abilities. But fish do not have a neocortex, which means their sleep will be completely different. Strictly speaking, this is not even dreaming, but something like suspended animation, during which the fish rests. Its duration depends on the species, surrounding conditions, and a bunch of other factors. For example, during migrations, fish don't seem to even try to give themselves a break. Or maybe they sleep on the move. Since a fish sleep is still not a sleep in common sense, why not rest and swim at the same time? Still, scientists do not have an exact answer to how exactly fish don't sleep. Too many species, too different conditions, too hard to study. Even those examples of suspended animation that have already been discovered are very different from each other. Sand lances burrow into the sand to rest and not get caught by predators. Some coral fish get between the reef branches to avoid being swept away by the current. The parrotfish even secretes a mucus cocoon, which protects it from parasites and hides it from predators. Would you like to rest in a sleeping bag made of your own saliva? Also bad. Until scientists have conducted adequate research, it's too early to come to any conclusions. But it seems to me that fish don't sleep a lot. It's hard to get yourself a good rest when there's always a risk of being eaten. And then I thought, what if people behave the same way? No burrowing in the sand to take a nap, but resting for a couple of hours. Spoiler alert, nothing good will happen. An adult needs an average of 7 to 10 hours of sleep. If you don't have time to rest during the night, you'll start losing focus. Your mood will change. It'll be difficult to quickly react to what is happening. Well, you know how sleep deprivation works, and if you suffer from a constant lack of sleep, it'll result in a whole bunch of consequences. The risk of obesity, diabetes, stroke, high blood pressure, heart disease, poor mental health, and finally, early death. But why did all geniuses sleep so little then? You've probably heard these stories about Einstein getting enough sleep in three hours, which is why he was so smart. Here's the thing. This is not true. The great physicists loved to sleep at least 10 hours and felt great. Though Nikola Tesla could not stand wasting time for sleep, rested intermittently, and admitted that he sleeps no more than two hours per day. And he, of course, was a genius, and had more than one nervous breakdown at the same time. University professors even wrote to Tesla's father that unless he were removed from the school, Tesla would die through overwork. A questionable role model. But let's leave the geniuses in peace and get back to the whales. They're something of Tesla themselves. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Well, in terms of resting time. Now remember, they're in complete control of their breathing. And here's the fact, whales can really drown. And this has happened before. Usually whales can calculate their timing, speed, and depth of their dive precisely. But sometimes they find themselves close to the coast where it's too shallow to swim, but deep enough for the water to get into the blowhole. The animals simply cannot breathe, and they drown. That's because whales have lungs. Fish have no problems breathing underwater, but only if there's enough oxygen in this very water. If there are too many creatures in a small body of water, it literally becomes stifling. Fish can suffocate, and anyone who's been on crowded buses in hot weather can imagine what it feels like. See you later.